Well, good morning. Welcome to Agape. Agape is unconditional love. We teach the science of mind and other spiritual philosophies and everything we do is practical. Today's going to be a different day. Normally I would do a meditation and then I go through a normal talk. But today I want to do something different. I want to go beyond the surface to understanding the science of mind. And so I was sent some questions in response to last week's talk where I did the talk on oneness. And so I'm going to take these questions one by one and give you my opinions and how I look at them. The first question that I got was, how can I use the principle of causative power to shift my mindset from fear and limitation to one of abundance and possibility in everyday situations? So first off, causative power. It means there is a creative power that responds to the nature of your thought. Your life is an outpicturing of spirit, and spirit is giving you whatever you focus on that you hold persistently and consistently. It does not care what you want. It cares only what you believe, and it's automatic. So one of the things that happens when you get into religious science, people start doing spiritual mind treatments, our form of affirmative prayer. They do it for things, and they're missing the boat. The boat is that when you focus on spiritual mind treatment, if you know that you're one with the infinite, therefore you know that abundance is your natural source. So you focus then on seeing abundance in everything. So in an everyday situation, you can look at, walk outside, look at the grass. There's an abundance of blades of grass. There's an abundance of leaves on the trees. Don't look at things and say scarcity. If you're looking at life and you're seeing scarcity out there, that means that you have a consciousness of scarcity. Of scarcity. Look at things from the standpoint of, oh my God, there's an abundance of people. There's an abundance of food. And when you start focusing on that, you start to see life differently. You may say there's not an abundance of love. Oh yes, there is. You've just got to look differently. And so the power to shift your mindset is just a little bit of a, it's a little turn. It's how you putting your focus out there. And then the causative power is that which keeps you focused. It's very simple. If you're thinking about a red Mustang, all of a sudden you're going to start noticing red Mustangs. But if you're thinking about a blue minivan, you're going to notice blue minivans. The causative, causative power brings to you what you think and focus on the most. So next, what practices can I incorporate into my daily routine to remain more aware of my thoughts and consciously direct them toward positive outcomes? Well, the first thing I'm going to say, obviously, is that you need to meditate. You don't need to. You can choose to meditate. Why? Because meditation is the process of slowing your mind down and connecting with the infinite. Once you connect with the infinite, you're tapped into your power. And then you start to realize, I'm not my body. I'm not this mind. I'm not these emotions. I am that which is observing it. And when you can start to become that observer, then you can observe, oh, I'm having these thoughts that are fearful. And if I'm having these thoughts for I'm fearful, then I'm having a fearful experience. And then what am I attracting? I'm attracting people that are in fear. Notice the people around you that you hang around with the most. Those people are attracted to you because you're vibrating the same energy. When you understand and you look at that person over there, like I can look at my friend Charles. I can see where he's focused on when he's with me. And I can say, oh, that's where my focus is. So I realize that everything in the world, my friends, what I'm talking about, is mirroring back to me who I am. And then again, too, what are positive outcomes? That's a question that has to be answered, too. There's no such thing as positive or negative from the divine's perspective. There's only positive and negative from the, from the personal perspective. I like to look at things more from, where am I directing my thoughts? I want directed thoughts, not positive thoughts, because they differ. 
So I direct my thoughts toward things. And when I do that, all the resources, they come up for me and I start to have the experience. Also, I would say to you, one of the practices that needs to be brought in is be grateful for everything. When you're grateful for everything, you're going to attract more of what you're grateful for. So if you're looking for more abundance, be grateful for the abundance you've got in your life. If you're looking for more friends, be grateful for the friends that you do have in your life. If you're looking for a deeper love, be grateful for whatever love you've got in your life. You implement meditation and focusing and gratitude, man, you're going to change your life. Next, I was asked, how can I cultivate greater faith and trust in the law of cause and effect when I don't see immediate results in my life? The first thing I would say is start small. Chances are most people pick the big things. They pick the big things because that's where they really want it to go. But big things because we're in human perspective and the human mind takes time to develop a new belief. A new belief doesn't occur overnight. The more difficult the situation, the longer it takes for the belief to be built. And that in turn, until the belief is built, you're not going to see the result. So pick something small and start to build the belief about that small thing. In other words, chunk down the big goal into a smaller goal. And when you chunk it down, guess what? You'll be able to build that belief and you demonstrate. The more times you demonstrate, the more faith you develop in the process, and then you're willing to spend the time to keep building the belief for the longer one, for the bigger one. I've done this over and over again. When I was doing my healing from my brain tumor, I gave myself one year to do the spiritual practice, to meditate, to visualize, to pray, and to change some habits that I had. I gave it a year, then I measured the result, and the result was what I want. I did not set an unrealistic expectation, because if, you're realistic, if your expectation is unrealistic, you're not gonna build the faith that you're looking for. All right, Reverend Lee, what steps can I take to change long-held negative beliefs that may be unconsciously shaping my experiences? Well, if you've determined their negative beliefs, the first thing you can do is write down on a piece of paper, how are these negative beliefs affecting your life? That's it. Write down all the things that they're negatively doing to you. Then take time on another sheet of paper and write down, if I change this belief, what benefits would I get? And write down 30, 40, 50, maybe even 100 benefits to why if you changed a simple belief, you could have something different in your life. I did that when I was dealing with my brain tumor. I changed the belief about eating. At the time, I was eating the, the, the diet of a bodybuilder. Six meals a day. I had meat at every meal. Every meal. Six meals a day. When I did research on healing my brain tumor, I came across being a vegan. In order for me to make that step, I had to determine that my life, my health, my brain, my children, my wife, everything was worth more than the food I was eating. When I got to that, I became a vegan instantly and I never looked back. Now, am I a vegan today? No, I'm a vegetarian. I've healed and I realize that, and I keep mod monitoring myself, but I realize that I'm cool with where I'm at. I'm getting the results that I want right now. And I needed more protein that I get through eggs and things of that nature. How do I balance accepting my current circumstances with using my creative power to manifest new experiences? Well, that's pretty simple. Your current circumstances are the result of your prior beliefs. Just that simple. Now you want new, you've got to build a new belief. You look at it this way. Everything you're experiencing now, your current circumstances, you created through your beliefs. So we know right up front, you're a success. You are successfully using the law of cause and effect. 
So if you know you're a success, okay, I know I can do that. I've created my life experience. Oh, I, I'm a worry wart. Well, I've got a lot to worry about. Well, I don't want to be a worry wart. Okay, now I'm going to begin the process of seeing. Maybe the affirmation is things always work out for me. That's one of my affirmations. The things, no matter what I'm in, they always work out for me. And I can look back at my life and realize they always have. Even through the hardest things that I've experienced, they've always worked out for me. And then I keep realizing that when I'm not happy, it's because I'm not growing. I'm not growing, meaning I'm not manifesting new experiences. I believe the purpose of life is to continue to grow and manifest new experiences as much as I can. So I accept what is and then I move forward. What role does gratitude play in applying the principles of science of mind to attract more of what I want? I talked about that briefly in a, a prior question. The universe hears what you're grateful for. And when you're saying you're grateful for something, you're also telling the universe, I'm successful at that. So let's say you've been successful at building a wealth of $100,000, but you want $10 million. Be grateful for that $100,000. Be grateful for that $100,001. Be grateful for that $100,002. The universe starts picking up that trend and you become the person who can handle more. See, the universe only gives you what you can handle now. And if you can't handle what you've got now, it's not going to give you more. So if you're in debt, do you think the universe is going to give you a quick $100,000? Well, look at what happens when people buy the, get a lottery win. They're in debt. They win millions of dollars. Within two years, they've lost it all. Why? They didn't become different. And you become different by how you express your gratitude. So if you are in debt right now, be grateful that you have money coming in and be grateful that you're reducing your debt one dollar at a time. Gratitude is everything. Be grateful that for every breath. Realize that every day you have so many breaths. Figure 60 breaths an hour or maybe less than that. 30 breaths an hour. Okay. Or 30 breaths a minute. Okay. Times 60. Times 24. Be grateful for all the breaths. Be grateful for every heartbeat that you've got. Be grateful for the air on your face, the sun in the sky. Be grateful for everything. Even the things that are bad, be grateful for them. Because when you express gratitude, the universe keeps saying yes to you. How can I apply the triune nature, spirit, mind, and body to set clear intentions and bring them into manifestation into my life? Pretty simple. When you think about the triune nature, spirit, soul, and body, let's, let's change the words of that. Let's change it to seed, soil, and plant. So what are you, what's the seed? Your thoughts. What's the soil? The unconscious, your subconscious mind, the soul aspect of you. What's the body? Whatever seed you plant. So here's the key thing. You want apples, you plant an apple seed. But once you plant the seed, you keep nourishing it. You don't go digging it up to see if it grows. And that's what most people do. They're saying, I'm going to be abundant. I'm going to have this abundance. Oh my God, I got to pay these bills. And a negative energy comes in. What have you done? You've dug up the seed. The key thing to a spiritual practice is that it is persistent and consistent. You plant the apple seed. You water it with affirmations. You water it with positive intent. You water it with positive expectation. And the seed grows and you keep watering it. You keep seeing the sun on it. And then lo and behold, you have apples. You do that with the experiences you want in your life. It's that simple. You test it on small things and you prove it. Then you test it on bigger things and you'll find the triune nature is always working and it's always working for you because it's always giving you who you are. What is the best way 
to handle challenges and set or setbacks while staying grounded in the belief that I am the cause of my own experiences. It's the simple practice of accepting what is. What's in front of you right now? Whatever you're dealing with, accept it. Feel it at the fullness of all that you are. Feel it at the very depths of what you are. And now say, where do I want to go? And bring your focus to that. A setback is simply saying, oh, I wasn't doing it exactly right. It's like the idea, what does the word sin mean? It's an archery term that says missing the mark. So a setback is you pointed that arrow and you did not hit the bullseye. That means you've got to turn where you aim your bow. The same thing is true in any setbacks. Well, oh, I need to shift my focus and my actions just a little bit. You shift, you shoot again. Guess what? You missed it again. Okay, shift again. Don't judge yourself. You're learning from everything you do. Every setback is a learning experience of how to reclaim your power. And never judge yourself by your experiences. They're just experiences. Have them, let them go, and move on to the next. That's simple. Not easy. That simple. When we relax into confusion, we create the divine space, the divine insight to open up the door to inner transformation. That's not a question. What I've come to in my life right here, right now, is that relaxation is the key to life. Wherever you are, relax into it. If you're fighting against something, you're going to get more of what you're fighting against. When you relax into it, you surrender into the divinity that you are, and you will be guided one step at a time. That's how life works. It's a journey. It's not a destination. It's one step at a time.